Hey, Chef Eric here again with Steak Ager. I want to say thanks for joining me earlier this afternoon, hopefully you did, for the uh, dry-aged cheesesteaks, which were phenomenal. So after uh, sufficient uh, digestion and a nap, we're back again. So we're doing the breakdown of a 35-day bone-in ribeye. Uh, hopefully a lot of the newer folks to the Steak Ager page are actually going to join us to check it out, see uh, what it takes. And um, I'm pretty excited. Every day you take something out of the steak ager is a good day. Remember that. So I'm going to go over to my fridge right now and we're going to pull this thing out. My edge star. And there it is. Hasn't been opened in 35 days. So. I have my muffin fan that sits on top of my steak ager. I'll pull that up and put it up there. And I've got my sensor push that does my fridge temp. I've got my ink bird. That's the probe for the ink bird. And that's the ink bird. Quiet that now. Then I'm going to pull the whole steak ager right out of here. I do want to take it out because I am going to clean it in between sessions. And you, here we go. What do you clean it with? I'm going to clean it with a solution of vinegar and water. You want to, you know, not too powerful vinegar because you don't want it to smell like vinegar, but nice 50 50 solution. Let it dry really well. Um, and that should take care of it. Okay, so here we go. Steak ager. Wi-Fi edition. I'm going to slide the door off. Right there. And here it is. This is a bone-in ribeye. We bought this at... Where did we buy this one, then? Nick's, maybe? No, Restaurant Depot, or... Oh! Oh, this is your ShopRite one or Acme one or something. This is my ShopRite one because I had a, a killer sale during the holidays. Thank you, Peanut Gallery. So, here, we're going to slide the shelf right out. That's looking beautiful. Let me get the steak gauger out of here. So, this is the charcoal filter. That's the meat. From Kevin Holmes Liddell, how many steak agers do you have? I have my original steak ager, and I have uh, the Wi-Fi model. Excuse but I want to point, just point this out before I get to the meat. You have two Wi-Fi models. I have two Wi-Fi models. Uh, I want to point this out before I get to the meat that this is the carbon filter, Oops. the charcoal filter. Um, sits right in this little slot near the fan that evacuates the humidity. All right, so this thing will help minimize the odors in the fridge. Um, what you do is you'll rinse it off, clean it out nice with some soap. And if you sit this in the sun, it'll recharge. You can use it again. It's pretty cool. It smells like dry-aged beef. Say hi to Carl Ruiz. Hey, Chef Carl Ruiz joining us. How is California, my man? You're, uh, I'm sure, I hear you're going to a party. With some uh, some nice ladies from the Food Network, which, by the way, was hilarious the other night. Anyway, so Chef Carl is awesome chef. He's a judge on Guy's Grocery Games. He's got a great restaurant here in Jersey, and uh, love him to death. He's a good man. He's a good man. So I'm gonna get right to this meat. So here we. Uh, you can see it's got a beautiful pellicle formed. You can see it's all around. It's beautiful. It's waxy. You guys, a lot of you veteran guys have seen me do a video before like this. Um, it's definitely lighter than it was when I put it in. And uh, we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. So here we got bones. One, two, three, four, five bones. 
There's also the round bones, which are here. A lot of butchers will take those out so it's easier for you to carve up. Um, but for our purposes, we keep it in. Uh, it further protects the meat because when these come out, they're holes. All right, so those holes could harbor uh, what we're going to call cooties. So we don't want that. Um, here you can see a couple of lines here. If you get a cut from a butcher, you can actually get what's called the flat bones that go right here that are in place. If, I, if they're there, I like that because it further protects the meat and they're just flat bones, you just gotta cut them right off. This one being that it's a supermarket uh, roast, it, uh, these, these were removed uh, before I got it. Um, I can tell that this dry age nice and uh, gently. Um, sometimes the ends will pull in if, you know, if it doesn't happen gently. Um, you know, so I just wanna point out that my temperature was about 35 to 37 degrees average. And uh, that's exactly where I like it. I don't worry about the humidity. It starts high. As the aging goes along, it goes lower. And I'm gonna encourage you guys to not worry about it. You wanna worry if the temperature's too high, but the steak ager does what it's supposed to do, keeps the humidity below 78%. You know, you go up in the 90s for any period of time, it's not good. No bueno, as my friend says. So um, we keep it below 78, and I've got more than a dozen, maybe 15 or 20 agings under my belt. My humidity's been everywhere on the scale. Don't worry about humidity. Please. <laughs> I beg you. Um, takes a lot of conversation on the family group. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first remove these round bones. It is a little bit challenging. You just got to work at it and pull them out. Um, they are kind of conical in shape, so the point goes down into the meat. So you really want to, using the O.J. Simpson hold, you want to uh, just go around them. And Kevin Kelly is doing the cheesesteak thing for dinner. Oh, fantastic. That makes me happy. Come around. All right, Lynn's gonna come around and try and get uh, a good camera angle. You know, and they all fall in a different area. So, you know, this one's really close to the edge. You know, so you really just wanna cut around. Don't worry about cutting too much meat. The pellicle kind of saves you from going too deep, but you really wanna get underneath it like that. And you really just gotta take your time and work at it. It's better. It's better doing this than have them, having them removed before you age because it really does protect the meat. All right, working away at it. Feel free to ask any questions, guys, while we're here. All right, so here's the first one. It's out. Actually, why don't you want to show what that looks like? Yeah, so if you I want to show you. I want to show you that this is what it would look like if it was removed prior. And you can see that there's meat here. So we see sometimes when we cut into our roasts, there is the darkened meat, which is oxidized. It's perfectly fine to eat. It's just oxidized because the air got to it. That's what's gonna happen in each one of these holes if these are removed before. Um, if they are removed, don't worry about it. It's still okay, but optimal situation is to have them in. So we'll go to the next one. And you just gotta feel around the bone with your knife. And Craig Belton says Louisiana is watching and looks great. Fantastic. We are planning our trip down to NOLA in July because it's not hot enough here in New Jersey in July. Yeah, we're really excited. Okay, so I'm cutting it around, isolating it, and then I'm going in sideways. And again, take your time, work at it. You can see why the butchers will remove it to make the cutting of the roast easier. Because you know, most of their customers, you gotta remember, are buying a roast to make a prime rib. So they want to they're, they take it home, throw it in the oven, cook it in a couple hours, and then be done. 
and slice it up for their guests. So we're doing something different. So we gotta ask for something different from your butcher. Okay, it's two. Again, feel with the knife. You'll feel where the bone is. Cutting around. Could you shut the dishwasher off? Button on the left. Thank you, sir. Working at it, working at it. Any questions out there? Any questions from the peanut gallery? Not yet. All right. Well, it's important. You got to tell them what you're doing, that you, you know, that you're dry aging. You know, again, most of the people there ask the butcher for just a specific weight. Like I'm feeding this many people. What size roast do I need? And you know, and that's pretty much what they do all day long. So when we go and ask them for something specific, like we know what we're talking about, they uh, they actually like it, but it takes them by surprise. Okay, digging them out. Oh, one, one sec. We found that you have to ask for the fat cap because sometimes they like to take the fat cap off. Yes. Even though you can still put their, your duck fat on top, but really ask for that fat cap. Yes, very important. A lot, you know, a lot of times, you know, we've discussed this on the page. A lot of times the butcher will also remove the fat cap and hinge it so you can actually lift it off and then you got to cut it and they'll lay it back down. They'll also remove the bones and then tie them all back on together. We want to ask them not to do that. We want one with the bones left attached, not tied on, and the fat cap intact. And question from Michael Maxson, Mason. Yes. So if you break that down and only want to eat two steaks, can you vacuum seal the rest and freeze them? You absolutely can. It's a great question. Because the removal of moisture from the dry aging process, the dry aged beef will freeze extremely well. You know, vacuum seal them, the last, they will last longer than they will last because they won't last because you're going to eat them first. How's that for a, uh, for a puzzle? It's like circular, circular logic. Yeah. Um, and Brian Master first suggested that you have a, have a shop with meat accessories and cutlery. And what? Cutlery. Sure, I could do that. Show you what I'm using. I'm actually going to switch. I got a Japanese boning knife, edge on one side, but it's very stiff. I'm going to see if it'll make this go a little easier. Yeah. Like I can use it and add some leverage because I'm not afraid of bending the the blade. And Kevin Holmes Liddell, did you ask for specific rib numbers when you went in? I did not. This was because it was a supermarket sale. Um, I did not ask the guy for really anything special. Uh, he gave me, in cryovac, the way he gets it, a full subprimal, and I took it that way. So. But when you go to the butcher, you've taken the rack with you. Yes, you can go to the butcher, take the rack with you as a template, you know, and ask them to cut it to size so you don't have to buy the whole thing. I mean, this sale was so cheap, it, it was, you know, it didn't make sense not to buy the whole thing. And, uh, but yeah, you can definitely, if you're going to a butcher, you definitely don't hesitate to have a conversation and tell them exactly what you want. Another one, one left. So, I don't know if Carl is still here, but he did a video yesterday, as he often does when he lands in San Francisco, went to a restaurant called The Prime Rib. Now, this restaurant, I don't know if it would, it's been there a long time. You know, I was thinking, boy, I wish we had a restaurant like this near us. These guys like specialize in prime rib and they have the most amazing set up ever. They have carts in the dining room 
and they're kind of like giant fancy chafing dish carts. And what these guys do is they lift the, the hood of this thing and inside are whole subprimal prime ribs cooked, standing on their ends. And the waiters who, and I wish they would do this in New Jersey, have white coats on, just like the good old days. They actually will cut the prime rib from these subprimals to order in the dining room table side. It's the most amazing thing. They've got uh, piping hot gravy right next to it, and they got mashed potatoes, and they dish them up right in the dining room, and it looks phenomenal. I regret, well, actually, I don't regret, because I'll tell you the story. We were in San Francisco, and we had a reservation at the Prime Rib. <laughs> that was until I got a call from, or a text from Carl, call me 911. So I called him up, and uh, he had happened to secure us a very hard to get and desirable reservation at a Michelin star restaurant that, yeah, I, would, I will never regret. So we just have to go back to San Francisco and go to the Prime Rib, because okay. it looks that good. Okay, so House of, it's called House of Prime for Scott yeah. Quigley. Thank you. And Kevin Holmes, he got, Sam, he got Sam in there, and, it, and Scott Quigley has been there many times. So we, and we, Scott, what is your review? Oh, I missed that. He, I think he said it was very good. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's an excellent restaurant, eaten there many times. Awesome. This is quite deep, this one. I feel like a dentist taking out a wisdom tooth. And from Blair Fire, he said, Lowers has been doing it in Chicago for forever. Nice. This New Jersey is, I don't know, behind the eight ball on that one. There we go. And, and Kevin was kidding about the salmon. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Oops. I'm, you know like, what, I'm like, wow, there's thanks. There's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> All right. So here we got the round bones. They're going in the pile. A lot of collagen in there. I'm going to use it for my beef stock. So you just throw it in the bag with the other yep. stuff in the freezer? Throw it in, freeze it, hold on to it. So that'll be another video. Okay, so here we go. You see those holes there? You don't want that. You want to you want to have those bones in, and then pull them out once it's dry aged. Okay. So I am going to start out with this face. As you can see, it's a little concave. It's also very close to this bone. So why why are you choosing this side? Well, I got to cut the sides off. Okay. So here, I'm going to try and go very thin here. You know, and oftentimes it takes, you know, a couple of cuts. Don't worry about getting it off in one shot. You go this way. You know, you basically just want to shave the face off till you reveal the red meat, which is there. So keep going. And you know what? This is completely safe. This pellicle, you can eat it. This is the dry aged uh, beef stock, you know, that I'll make out of this. You know, so here in this case, it's very close to the bone. So I may leave more pellicle on this end than I normally would, just because I can't get it unless I want to take the bone off. So I'm going to keep going down as far as I can. And this is a, shows you, you know, every roast is completely different. So it, um, you know, it might help to ask the butcher if you're going to a butcher that actually, you know, cuts down the meat himself, that uh, you really, you need to be not so close to the bone, All right? So like that's, that, this is where the bone is right here. So, you know, you do the best you can. Not to worry about it, it's not that serious, you know? So I'm gonna keep that like that. We're gonna go to this end and do the same thing. This one also is very close to the bone here. So, do the best you can. Nice. So I'm gonna cut this at an angle. Sharp knife, really important here, folks. Look at that, it's beautiful. Beautiful color. about as 
as close as I can get because of that bone, so I'm not going to sweat it. Those two end pieces will just have a little bit more dry age flavor than the others. All right, so I like to keep the bone on my steaks. So at this point, I'm just simply going to go along the bone and we're going to get some big steaks out of this. All right, so I'm going to cut in here. And this is when you really see, you know, the penetration. Let's see here. Yes, see that beautiful mahogany color? It's exactly what you want. It's got a beautiful eye. It's got a little bit of a spinalis around here. Nutty, 35 days. Could have gone longer, but decided not to. So here all I'm going to do is I am going to cut a thinner boneless. So we will maybe have a little taste of it. Dinner. Dinner. Uh, Eric, do you have a hunsuki knife? Do you know what a Honsuki knife is? Not really sure. Brian, what's Do a tell. Brian, what's a Honsuki knife? What is that? <laughs> Honsuki knife. And, and Kevin Holmes Liddell said small smell Dorsey and beautiful lattice Dorsa. Huh? <laughs> I believe he was describing your, me. your meat. Yeah, yeah, so this is beautiful. Nice marbling, you know, for this was a certified Angus. So I think it's uh, pretty nice. And I'm go around the bone. So the Honsuki knife yes. from Brian says. It's a sharp point boning knife, very triangle, triangular knife. Is that this one? I'm thinking that that is like that. Oops, way out of Is it like that, Brian? Very stiff, pointy at the end. Blade on one side. Single edge. So now, you could choose, right, to cut a couple steaks off of this and then keep the rest for a whole roast. It's up to you. You also could, if you know, if you wanted to, you could do what a butcher might do and just cut all the bones off and then cut steaks whatever thickness you want. But I kind of like them hefty because you know, you can you can feed two people on a ste on one steak. You know, cook one steak, feed two people. Mm. From Kevin Hubling. Hi Eric. What are you going to do with the dry cutoffs? I'm gonna put them in the freezer. I am going to accumulate them till I have enough to make beef stock. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna cut this, maybe even it off a little bit. And we'll eat this, or maybe I'll save it for grinding. This will be a good taste. I'll throw it in a pan, maybe. Beautiful. Maybe we'll put Chris to work. And so now my question is... Cook up the flat steak. taste it um, I think I'm gonna keep this as a roast this will be good maybe throw it in the smoker this is gonna go out work and he's gonna get a nice pan there you go all this will go in the pile I'm gonna keep this as a roast That's what I think I'm gonna do so here we got the steaks now we're gonna work on the pellicle, you know, we're gonna cut each individual steak. It's a lot easier to do this than to try and trim the whole thing. 
and then uh, you know, and then cut your steaks. So we, we do it this way. So all this, you really want to feel for what's really dried and hard. And I gotta say that this pellicle is actually pretty soft. It's not as hard as the edges were. Like these, you know, this is pretty hard. So I'm just gonna trim just a little bit off the really like dry, dry stuff. I typically don't want to cut off too much of the fat because that fat will melt as you cook it. But you're going to trim it down. Just go all around it. Again, you want to just get that dried stuff off. And now here you see the tail always has a lot of fat on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to French the bone on this one. I'll show you how to do that. Before you, before you go there? Yep. Uh, from Ray Ortiz, I found rubber grips on the knives work best for me when I'm cutting into dry age. Kevin Hoopman. Um, he asked about bacteria in the cutoffs. Um, Ray Ortiz says he can smell this all the way in Texas. Nice. So, want to talk about bacteria after the French? No, I'll talk while I am Frenching the bone. All right. So, bacteria. Okay, so this, we have a, in the steak ager, we use UVC light technology washes the air as it's blowing over the roast so I guess this is completely safe to eat it's just not palatable because it's hard you know it would be hard to chew um, so yeah as far as bacteria yeah there is none there's no bacteria um, if they're you know any bacteria is absolutely safe is stuff that you know isn't even on anyone's radar because it's a naturally occurring thing but yeah as far as this being uh, uh, not usable, it's absolutely usable. And Kevin Holmes Liddell, what temperature do you prefer to, this cut to be cooked at? Um, I will go 115 to 120, which is a high, high rare, low medium rare. That's what I typically do. All right, so I want to show you this. I'm going to French this bone. You cook this other steak while you're at it, or you want to just do that flat piece? Okay. Oh, we'll just do that. Fine. Um, so here you got all this fat here. So I want to keep a little bit of it. You are going to lose a little bit of this, but it's okay. You know, the it's all par for the course. So you're going to cut down to the bone. You're going to go across against the bone. Again, this is rend this is the stuff that you're going to render for beef tallow absolutely gorgeous okay so I'm cutting down the bone cutting the sides cutting the sides I'm gonna go to my boning knife narrower turn it twist it turn it twist it you want to not forget the back it's got this membrane on it Right against the bone. Take all that meat off. And then fat. Right against the bone. Sharp knife. So you basically want this bone clean. Scrape it. dried follicle here. I'm going to cut around there. Right this way. That's the really dried stuff. And look at that color. Absolutely gorgeous. Definitely nutty. Firmer. And again, if you if you if your flavor profile likes the dry aged beef a little bit you know, the flavor a little bit stronger, then leave some of the pellicle on. But you know, 
like I'm not cutting off all this because it's darker. I mean, it's still soft. It's not like this. So I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it on. This will be a nice dry age flavor. So there you go. French bone, beautiful ribeye. That'll be phenomenal. When you, when you do it that way, do you cook them any differently or do you have a way that you like to have them cooked? How do you mean? When you French the bone. No, it's just really for aesthetics. And if you want to be Neanderthal and pick it up like that, <laughs> pretty much. Um, you know, and it's also a way, you know, to get rid of all this fat because you really, you really don't need it. In the time it takes to cook this steak, all this fat won't really render. Um, so, you know, it's just, I, I prefer to cut it off. So that way you can use the fat and yeah. it looks pretty. Exactly. Well, this is a nice, this, this stuff is what tallow is made out of. It's what you want. Well, it looks like Chris has a little tasty morsel for us over there. see the color in here see the color of that meat it's absolutely gorgeous we do need a little salt I salted it chef ah mmm even at 35 yep. days phenomenal tender nutty beautiful mm, so, it's really good from Walton Merrill Woods I from Roatan made some butcher blocks just like that one. Uh, what wood is yours? Mine is Honduran rosewood. This uh, butcher block that I am cutting on was made from a hundred year old reclaimed black walnut. What? Talk to the tallow. What about the tallow? What that becomes. Okay. And you want to talk about finish your. Yeah, comment. let me finish my thought of that. The. Um, this is 100-year-old reclaimed black walnut from a barn in Ohio, USA. Um, had it made by a reclaimed wood guy. It is absolutely phenomenal. Love it. Um, so yeah, the tallow I am talking about, I know I talked about it in my last video, but you'll take the meat pieces off of here as much as you can, cut this into smaller chunks, you'll put it in a pot, and you will slowly render it. That is, draw the, the fat out of it. We call it liquid gold. And you, and, you know, do it for as long as you can, like hours. You know, very low temperature, let it draw that out. And what happens is you get, and then you'll strain it out really well. And then you get uh, dry aged beef tallow. So this is That's it. the container. It solidifies in the refrigerator. It's it smells, you know, like dry aged beef. And I cook everything in here. Vegetables, you know, Brussels sprouts with the, in there, eggs, everything that you would cook, like everything you use bacon fat for, you could use beef tallow for. Pop it just adds that, that flavor. Popovers. I'm, uh, I made uh, actually Yorkshire puddings using the dry aged beef tallow. It's really, uh, really amazing. And then I mentioned in the other video, that um, a lot of the smoker guys will actually make, you know, not let it solidify, keep it liquid, let it cool down, and they will inject their brisket with it before they put it in the smoker to get a dry age flavor in their brisket. Really, really great. So I'm going back to this pellicle, cutting it off. I'm going to keep on whatever is not too dry. You know, the fat, I will tell you, takes on the dry age flavor more than the meat. So, you know, if you just want to trim that down a little bit, that's fine. Again, all that'll be rendered down. And uh, yeah, this pellicles uh, was really not too, not too hard. And I hesitate. 
to bring up humidity because a lot of you know the theory is that if your humidity is lower you get more pellicle so my humidity right now is somewhere in the 30s again I don't worry about it I understand you know worrying about it I would worry if it was too high but I don't worry about it ever being too low because here I am in the, in the 30s and I've got a beautiful prime rib ribeye with a very minimal pellicle so that's uh, that's my that's what I'm going to say about that okay and I'm cutting off this I'm going to French them all session was done and we weren't having people over for a day or so that would be perfectly fine do your do your breakdown when it's convenient for you you can vacuum seal them keep them in the refrigerator if it's going to be longer vacuum seal and put them in the freezer it'll be absolutely perfectly fine how long can you keep them in the refrigerator or vacuum sealed you can get they'll stay in the refrigerator you know five days it's actually perfect I mean there's no degradation no loss of flavor um, from what I my research I do understand that if you keep them in for nine days that there is uh, the begins the loss of flavor this was on an extensive study that I saw on dry aged beef but again I don't know about your house but in my house the dry aged beef doesn't stay around long enough to worry about it okay so here we got another French bone this is the one with the end piece. Cut some of this off. This is a little bit harder because it's on the end. A lot more drier pellicle. And what uh, from Mike Scott, what retail price would you put on one of those steaks? No, oh, I never even thought of that. Um, I will tell you that there are a lot of restaurants that sell dry aged beef. In my area, you know, around the country, and let's see, we had a tomahawk steak, and it was eighty bucks. Yeah, it was eighty bucks. Did not have anywhere near the dry age flavor that I get from my steaks that I pull out of my steak ager. You know, I've since I've been steak aging with the steak ager. Um, I've been actually quite disappointed with dry aged beef that I've gotten in restaurants. Now, we all see these articles about 90 day, 125 day, peanut gallery is breaking their necks, nodding in agreement. Um, you know, I haven't had a 200 day uh, steak, you know, for $300 or anything like that. But for the average, you know, dry aged steak that you're finding in restaurants, which most likely have been dry aged 28 days um, and you know the they somewhat capitalize on the term dry aged steak because it's hot and it's and it's now you know so I am again quite disappointed in the available dry aged steaks around here and uh, this is uh, a fraction of the cost we do it ourselves it's um, we let the steak ager do its thing, and uh, I know my family's real happy about it. So I'm going to try and cut this off a little bit towards the <coughs> bone. Something you should be really careful at, cutting towards your your hand. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it. From Frank Rizzo, the man in action. Hey, what's up, Frank? Everybody say hi to Frank. For without him, none of this would be possible. Awesome. Hopefully you got to see my earlier video, Frank, of the amazing dry aged, um, we made uh, cheese steaks. Really good. So there we go. So here, again, another beautiful French bone. 
35 day ribeye. It's going to be phenomenal. And these are uh, most likely going into my freezer because unfortunately our dinner guests are unable to make it. So Our lunch guests are still here. Our lunch guests are still here. They were supposed to leave hours ago. Can't get rid of these people. But um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, I'm going to continue. I'll probably trim this uh, trim this pellicle off a little bit and just you know keep it as a roast but um, I want to again welcome everybody who is new to the steak ager family um, we thank you for your support um, we're happy to uh, assist you any way that we can answer any questions um, you know look at the look at the Facebook groups file section for a lot of great information uh, but don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, anyone can PM me if they have any specific questions that they may want to that want answered. I'm happy to help you. And um, you know that's it. You know those on your first steak ager session, be prepared for the best steak you've ever had. It's awesome. Um, and uh, that's it. I'm going to uh, sign off. I'll see you next time on the next Steak Ager Facebook Live or video. There'll be more to come. Peace.